Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Okay, well then, let's go. Let's do this thing. We've got the script for today's program already. Oh, man, I lost it. Where'd it go? Oh, no, we're lost. I can't find my script. What am I going to do? Anyway, I'm Joel Brzezinski. That's Mike Kapler. Kind of nervous because we don't have a script. Oh, I wait. feel like a politician without a teleprompter. <laughs> Yes, we're going to have to ad lib now. What are we going to do? You know, if you've been listening for any length of time, you know we like to have some fun on here. We're very serious about the subject matter that we talk about, but we do like to have some fun too. Uh, We are totally unscripted. I don't know, Cap, sometimes I will jot down a few words, like things that I may want to highlight, just so I don't forget that I wanted to say those things. But Yeah, we have nothing like a script when we do this podcast. (laughs) I I know. I I wish I would even start jotting down some things. Not that I've never done it, but I I think one of the last times I I started jotting down notes for a podcast, it turned into a book. So I'm not sure I want to do that again. (laughs) Right. Which reminds me, I always want to bring this up, but I always forget. But your book, Clash of the Covenants, I mean... A lot of it has to do with a lot of what we're talking about here in the book of Hebrews, but you did write a book. It's been out, what, two or three years now? Yeah, it's been three years, three I think. Years. Maybe almost three years to the month. Yeah, well, give it, just give it a little plug. Clash of the Covenants, you're talking it is, about. It is called Clash of the Covenants. There's one place you can find it. It's Amazon, perhaps even Amazon in your country if you're living outside the States. Clash of the Covenants, Escaping Religious Bondage Through the Grace Guarantee. And it was inspired through the podcast as we were getting ready to do a series on the Sermon on the Mount. That was really the kind of the crowning jewel, the centerpiece of the book. But many things are, are covered in it, and um, it's an easy read. I don't use big words because, frankly, I don't know any. Um, so I, I wrote it for me. And um, it, uh, it, it's it been interesting, Joel, getting the, the comments that, that I get from it. I appreciate the people who have um, posted reviews online and, and uh, wrote to me personally and told me what they've experienced with it as they've shared it with others. And I think that's the interesting thing about it is because I, I didn't hire a publicist. We didn't spend money on advertising. But those who read the book – Almost always, it seems like anyway, they um, want to buy copies to give to someone else. And so that's pretty cool. And so the it, it still keeps getting around there. But um, it, it's like having a podcast in your hand that you can keep referring back to, a Growing in Grace podcast, covering many things that we've talked about over the years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, get that book in your hands and um, it'll be very encouraging for you. And like he said, it is an easy read. It's deep. I mean, it's it's involved. Um, it's got, you know, really rich information in the book, but it is an easy read, easy to understand, like the gospel should be. And, yes. and so that's that's what one thing I like about it. So, OK, well, we've been uh, in our series on Hebrews and we finally ended with chapter 10 last week. <laughs> But uh, it's we because I, I think we spent four or five weeks on that, which I enjoy because we had started off this series knowing that we were just kind of, in a sense, breeze through chapters one, two, three, four, five, six. A lot of good stuff building up to what we kind of consider the meat of the epistle, the, the, some of the really rich information about the sacrifice of Jesus and what was all accomplished through the finished work of Jesus. And so we kind of slowed down and spent more time after we got to chapter six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I hope that it has been very informative for people and helping people to understand all, indeed, all that was accomplished through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because like we talked about last week, you can't just take verses here and there and try to build a doctrine on them or, or try to understand just that verse. Because often, as in the case of Hebrews ten twenty six, if you read it just by itself, you'll actually come to the opposite 
view of what was actually said in the context <laughs> of, of the, if you take just the verse without the context. So I'm glad we spent a lot of time on that. And chapter 10 ended with this, and, and you read this last week, but we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith, or other versions say those who believe, to the saving or the preserving of the soul. So the point here is that it's not about your works, but it's about faith. That's what preserves the soul. It's not about your sin or lack of sin. It's those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. And then the writer starts off what we know as chapter 11, where he's really just continuing his own thought. He didn't write in chapters. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of of things not seen. And he goes on through this chapter for what we know as the Hall of Faith. Again, he didn't, the writer didn't come up with that, but we kind of know it as the Hall of Faith or the Faith Hall of Fame, however you want to look at it. And he talks about a lot of things that various of, uh, of the uh, patriarchs did by faith. So we'll see where this takes us this week. Yeah, yeah. I think we're reaching that part of the the treadmill run here. Uh, as you mentioned, Joel, we we kind of started out, you know, moving along and picking up speed in in about uh, chapter seven, eight, nine, and ten. Picked up speed on the treadmill, did some running. Now we're coming back down to a little bit of a jog or a faster walk again here in the in the last couple of chapters. But so the the faith chapter, right? As you said, faith, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, or the evidence of things not seen. See, Jesus is that evidence. Jesus is the faith. Uh, and I find it interesting because we, we can kind of rush through these quick. We don't have to go verse by verse, I don't think, in this mm-hmm. chapter that much, unless you want to. But um, yeah, we don't need to. verse by verse here, the, the writer looks back on men of old, uh, as, as it's stated, people of old received commendation or approval by faith. And he gives examples throughout. I I find it interesting, never really thought much about it until I started looking at it right now, but I find it interesting that he starts naming a bunch of people who were not under the law. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, when you stop and look at it here, let let me just breeze through this. I see Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain. Why? Because there was there was blood involved. Cain's did not have that. It was just the fruit of his own labor. Um, Enoch, okay, Enoch, another guy. Noah, Abraham, um, skipping through. There's Isaac and Jacob, verse 10, 11. Sarah uh, is mentioned. Verse, um, well, verse 13, all these died in faith without, without here we are again, Things that he said earlier in the book without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having Mm -hmm. confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. So they weren't able to receive, even though these were, you know, giants of the faith, right? The hall of faith, as you said, Joel, as we call it, they never were able to, uh, even though these people did some, some great things and, and exercised faith in God, they didn't receive the promise or the promises. And so he keeps on going here. I'm just breezing through this here. There's there's Abraham again, uh, Jacob, Esau, uh, Joseph, Moses. Uh, and now we get into Moses here a little bit. And, and this, even this, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And so, again, the law not in effect yet. Now, eventually we do get to the place and he talks about Moses some more here through uh, verses 26 through 29 and so forth. But um, and it, Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute, is also mentioned in here <laughs> um, because of something that she had done. And so I'm just skipping through here some more. Uh, okay, uh, here's some people who by faith conquered kingdoms. Uh, so verse 32, we do see where uh, you know Gideon and David is mentioned, Samuel, the prophets, uh, by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness without ever being righteous, never able to obtain righteousness. Uh, But they did obtain some promises, uh, but not the promise that uh, the writer of Hebrews was talking about earlier in the book. They shut the mouths of lions. And so we find all of these things in here. uh, But I, I just find it interesting that the vast majority of the people mentioned weren't even under the law. Right. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And the law is not of faith, as you mentioned, I think, last week. The law is not of faith. So we know that our life in Christ, which is by faith, 
it has nothing to do with the law. And and I do think it's interesting that these people, you know, Moses killed a guy, uh, Rahab, as you mentioned, you know, she was a harlot, and she's mentioned in the Faith Hall of Fame, uh, in the Hall of Faith. Um, Abraham messed up a few times, but he's mentioned here. And in Romans, uh, Paul even said that um, Abraham did not waver. His faith did not waver, even though we see him going to Rahab, uh, not Rahab, uh, to Hagar, Sarah's uh, ma- handmaiden, and having a child with her, but he still remained in faith. But I think one of the big points here is what you had mentioned. These people did not receive the promise. And right at the end, it's, it shows all these things that they went, that these that various people went, uh, went through. Uh, women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured. Um, some were stoned. Some were sawn in two and ill-treated. And all of these things, all, and in verse 39, and all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. There's that word better, which is a, a frequent occurrence in the book of Hebrews. The writer talks about a better covenant, better promises, So many better things. God has provided something better, and that's Christ. He starts off the chapter, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And like you said, Cap, it's talking about Christ there. That's what's better that has been provided for us. So this isn't so much about, wow, look at all these great things that these people did by faith. But the writer is actually saying, look, they gained approval by their faith, but guess what? We have it even better. God has provided something better for us. So I don't know. We got about a minute left, uh, Cap, if you want to wrap it up here. Yeah. Uh, great point there uh, toward the end, Joel, when you when you said that, I mean, Jesus is really our assurance. He's the assurance. He's the guarantee. Yeah, Hebrews 7.22. Um, you know, he, he's the, uh, the manifestation of faith. He's the manifestation of 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 grace he is the promise the seed that was promised uh, and and that if you if you walk away with nothing else from hebrews 11 because a lot of times we try to turn faith into a work <laughs> it's about my faith and generating more faith and clenching my fists and you know grinding my teeth and i'm going to try harder to have more faith well you just need to trust in in jesus i mean and and what he has done uh and not so much in in what you do um but the, the, the key point that Joel brought out here is that all of these things, um, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised. And the writer again mentions this in the earlier chapters. It was an unbelief problem for some of those people. But here he's saying, verse 40, the last ch- uh, verse of the chapter, because God ha- has provided something better for us. What is that? Well, it's Jesus. I mean, it's it's the new covenant. Christ is that covenant. Um, because they could not be made perfect whereas we have been perfected and so that's good news and we'll we'll be wrapping up uh, our hebrew series here uh, i would imagine possibly on on our next program as we jump into uh, hebrews uh, 12 next i hope you'll join us right here on the growing in grace podcast you'll find our past archived programs at growingingrace.org This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.